Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. What with the job going and all kinds of other things keeping me busy, I sometimes did things and didn't have a chance to really carry on with the project. One of those things was uh, when I got a chance I stopped by the Habitat for Humanity Restore. It's a great source of things that uh, it's kind of like going to an estate sale. Uh, about the same kind of prices too. So over the summer I stopped down there quite a few times and I picked up a few items. These are some of the best ones. When I changed out the hot water heater, part of the problem was the bottom rusted out on it and it's not something that you can see and when it goes, it goes completely. It, it doesn't just dribble, it usually goes pretty quickly. Uh, so down at the Habitat for Humanity Restore, they had a box of these things. It's called a flood alarm. Uh, protect your property against accidental fl flooding from sump pumps, washing machines, hot tubs, and water heaters. Mount with Velcro, tie strap, or simply lay the unit near the possible flood source and adjust the sensor wire. Haven't put it in, but later on this afternoon, I think I probably will. I was lucky with the last flood. It didn't get to anything important. All I had to do was uh, mop up the floor and then spend a few days getting a new hot water heater put in. But I was real lucky. There was only about an inch of water in the center of the basement floor, right in the low spot. Fortunately, the hot water heater was in the lowest spot of the whole basement. So the water all stayed there, and that inch of water never got out far enough to get to anything. But this little guy starts screaming as soon as the ends of this wire gets wet. So I'm going to mount it to the side of the hot water heater and put it down in the catch basin that I put underneath the water heater. There wasn't one when I bought the house and I never picked up the hot water heater to slide one underneath it. Now there is one. If I get a little drip of water in that metal pan, that's going to set off this little alarm and it's going to scream bloody murder. So it won't catch me by surprise anymore. Now when does the hot water heater go out? When it's ready to. No timer on them, but you can usually figure about the time the warranty goes out, the hot water heater will too. Now you would think a guy with uh, as many drill bits as I have wouldn't be bothering with another set. But These five drill bits cost five bucks. And they're all Irwin's. Uh, Irwin makes really good drill bits. And these look like the main bore series. Now these are newer ones, they're not called main bores. Those were something that you got in the 30s or 40s and 50s. But these are just the same style. They're the single shank, double lip, really good drills. These need sharpening. But for a buck a piece, can't complain. This is a no-name brand, but it's a number 22. This is still an old square shank, so it's probably made back before the 50s. But I haven't polished it down far enough to see if there's a name on it anywhere. Uh, this one costs two dollars, but it's a size 22. Great size drill bit. And the threads on the pilot are in good shape. The cutting edges are in fairly good shape. It just needs to be cleaned up. And this thing, I had a project on the books for, I don't know, half a year. 
and it's a parts washer. This plastic tub came home from a garage sale where I had stopped and a lady from across the street came over and said, you look like a guy who could use some tools. I said, yeah, not really knowing where she was going. She said, we have a rental house and the rental house, uh, we had some work done on it and, and the workers left a whole bunch of tools there and I don't need them. Would you want them? So I went over to the house and picked up, I don't know, trowels and, and uh, wrenches for basins and all kinds of things. And they came home in this uh, tub. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have a parts washer? I needed a drain. Habitat Restore, three bucks. About, what, 20% of the price of a new one? So I'm going to take the hole saws and I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom of this thing, mount it on a frame, put a bucket underneath it and stick an electric pump that I've got in that bucket so that I can wash parts in here. That's going to make it so that when I bring home something dusty and rusty like this, I'll be able to wash it down. I'll probably just use something like grease lightning. Uh, and then. Uh, I can wash off the parts, have them look really nice. Do it down here in the basement where it's clean and dry. The last thing I got at the ReStore is this Sears 3 8 inch drill. Develops a quarter horsepower. It's a model 315-11080. Now when you look at it you go, wow that's an old one. What possible value could there be in that? Well, when you look at them, this is an old one. It's from the 60s. It has the rounded shell. It's not reversible. Chuck is in good shape. Could use a little oil. Put some of this CRC Ultralight 336 dry film lubricant in there. Now oh, that works much better. Perfect. Beautiful. Costs a grand total of five bucks. And this is the old Craftsman. This is when Craftsman made tools that actually worked. So I'm very happy to have this, and I might end up passing it on to somebody else, who knows. Came with a chuck key. It's kind of a rare thing to find anymore. People get these old drills and then they don't use them, they just toss them. But the Habitat for Humanity Restore takes the old tools, sells them, uses the money to fix up a house for somebody that can't afford one. Pretty good deal. So now I've got one, two, three projects, four projects here that need to be done and I'll be on those the rest of the afternoon. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel. Just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching.